I'm still getting emails and messages every day. I kid you not. Are people saying, you're wrong. Change your name to the Hydrogen Viking. Because the future is hydrogen, not electric. Now, I'm curious. Do you think these people, are, do you think they're employees of Big Oil? Maybe Shell or BP? Saudi Aramco, maybe? Have you heard that Saudi Aramco is going all in on engine development? Seriously, they've got like 40 engineers. Good luck with that. Anyhow, hydrogen isn't really the future. Well, people keep saying, even electric car fans, even people who believe the, the future of the industry is electric, they keep saying, long haul trucking, that's where hydrogen is. Long haul transport, hydrogen is the solution. Well, it turns out quite a number of experts say that's wrong. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Bangkok in Thailand. You're probably thinking, you don't look very Thai. You don't sound very Thai. That's because I'm from Australia. Rachel Williamson from The Driven says that hydrogen for long distance trucking makes no sense, according to experts. And Rachel, I'm with you. I used to believe it did. And then uh, I grew up and realized that I was wrong, realized the error of my ways, and that actually it wasn't the future. Now, how important is it as an adult human being to recognize when you're wrong? Honestly, it's so important for your success. I'm often wrong. Uh, in fact, I'm wrong so often that um, I don't know how I managed to just stick around. It's amazing. But you know what? Fortunately, I make just enough right decisions to actually be here for you today to be able to make you these videos. And one of the things I've realized is that we need to change our mindset when something changes. When nuclear becomes unviable, we need to change our mindset. When the price of something comes down and the price of something else goes up, that's when we have to change our mindset. Hydrogen has been this thing, this mythical concept. We've been saying for years and years and years, it's a little bit like solid state batteries. We've been saying it will be taking off. Now, car companies and trucking companies and big oil have been working on getting hydrogen to work for more than 30 years. It still hasn't happened. There's a good reason for that. A UK-based hydrogen expert says the goal of using green hydrogen as a way of greening up Long distance trucking makes no sense and is completely wrong. That's true. At least I think it is. The potential uses of green hydrogen have been hyped up by many governments and aspiring developers, and it is considered a non-starter for passenger vehicles. I mean, as you can see, no one's buying hydrogen powered cars. I mean, ridiculously, uh, the Californian government, the US government are investing about $8 billion into hydrogen in the US, primarily on hydrogen powered fuel stations. In fact, there's so many hydrogen powered fuel stations. If you buy a hydrogen car, you can pretty much just own your own hydrogen fueling station if it's working. And if it's got enough hydrogen, did you know this? Hydrogen fueling stations only have enough hydrogen for 55, about 55 to 58 cars. When they run out after, 50, after the 55th to 58th car, that's it. They need to be refueled by a truck. That doesn't make a lot of sense in my opinion. Cambridge professor and co-founder of the Hydrogen Science Coalition, David Seabon, says it does not stake up or add up even for long haul trucking. And I've reported on this quite a few times on this channel. I no longer believe it's viable. I no longer believe it makes sense. One of the key reasons is look at the cost of lithium this year. It's down by now 65%. What do you think is going to happen as a result of that to the cost of battery packs? Well, they've already come down by 20%. At the same exact time as the price of battery packs has come down, the energy density has gone up. And don't let anyone tell you that's not true because it is actually true. This year, we've seen massive advances. And all of this leads me to the realization that as renewable energy makes energy costs come down, we're going to see the dual benefit. Energy costs come down, battery costs come down, therefore electric trucks become way more viable. The Tesla Semi, in my mind, is a glimpse into the future. The Hydrogen Science Coalition said this, hydrogen trucking is really not going to happen anywhere. Um, this dude works for the Hydrogen Science Coalition, and he says hydrogen trucking isn't going to work. Now, you couldn't have a better example of someone who has just gone, you know what, sunk cost bias be damned. I'm going to actually just say what makes sense, what's logical. This dude is just a dead set legend. The vehicles are at least double the cost of a battery electric vehicle, and it costs three times more to run them than an electric vehicle. 
It doesn't make sense. The former Victorian says that even to, for remote locations like Fitzroy Crossing in Australia, which is 400 kilometers east of Broome, it's basically the middle of the desert, the middle of nowhere, that electrification is still a better option for heavy haulage for those prioritizing where their electrons are best spent. In other words, for the efficiency, for the affordability, for the, just the overall logical picture of heavy long distance trucking. You could make it on site, meaning hydrogen, but it takes three times more electricity to make the green hydrogen you need to, tra to take a truck one kilometer compared to driving an electric truck the same distance. Now I wanna reiterate this point. It takes three times more energy to drive a single kilometer in a hydrogen truck versus an electric one. And the hydrogen truck costs three times more to buy. Those are mathematics that simply don't stack up in the favor of hydrogen long distance trucking. There's no way to get around those. Even if somehow magically, the hydrogen vehicles became much cheaper and the, and the ability to actually produce the fuel became much better. There's no way known it would be anywhere near on par with electric. He said, if you have solar panels out in Fitzroy Crossing, you're way better to just make the electricity instead of converting that to hydrogen. The Driven said that they comprehensively dismantled the argument for hydrogen in passenger cars in January. And I read that article, it was well written. Seabon's research for the Innovate UK zero emission road freight demonstrator trial outlines the challenges he sees in using green hydrogen, which kind of doesn't really exist. I mean, I think about 1% of the world's hydrogen right now is actually green for long distance land haulage which he calls a scarce and precious resource that should be quarantined for sectors like aviation or shipping that can't be electrified at all. I think that makes complete sense, actually. Shipping and aviation. But that said, I won't be getting on a hydrogen powered airplane anytime soon. I'll feel safer on an electric one. Making green hydrogen via electrolysis, compressing and storing it, then using it in a fuel cell to make electricity to power a vehicle has an overall efficiency of 23%. That's a similar efficiency to an internal combustion engine vehicle. That compares to 69% for a pure battery vehicle. That means that hydrogen requires three times more land area for wind or solar farms to generate the same energy return. There's no way that that makes sense to anyone. Unless, of course, you're a representative of big oil or some kind of company that makes hydrogen, then it would make all the sense in the world. Now, his UK-based research says a 1,500 kilowatt hour battery can get a 44 ton truck around 700 kilometers of range or nearly 500 miles. And that's all you need. Now, I don't think that's necessarily accurate, but I'm going to guess that that's for big heavy loads. So it would depend on the size and the weight of the load. And it also depend on the efficiency of the truck, what motors it's using, what battery technology it's using. The difficulty is that this size battery is not available right now in Australia for long distance trucking. And the current workhorses of Australian long distance haulage, B double trucks, can on average make an 800 to 1200 kilometer trip without refueling. The only thing is, those trucks do have to stop every four hours. That's the legal rule. So it wouldn't really make any difference if you actually just stopped somewhere and charged your truck or swapped the battery over. Swappable batteries are a big thing now in big trucks during that time when you have to stop. In Australia, the largest heavy haulage vehicle battery is 1,400 kilowatt hours and is a prototype being used by Fortescue Metals Group to power a 240 ton truck used on mine sites. 240 ton truck that is massive the battery weighs 1.5 tons which is not a lot of weight when you consider the actual weight of a semi-sized truck it measures 3.6 meters long 1.6 meters wide and 2.4 meters high and it's made up of eight sub packs each with 36 modules all individually cooled and each with its own management system now rachel says that the volvo fh on the other hand has a 300 kilometer range and a 540 kilowatt hour battery. While that will get trucks halfway across Europe, in a country as vast as Australia, these vehicles will only be useful as intercity or port vehicles. Now I agree with Rachel on that, but I also don't think that big electric trucks, semi-sized electric trucks are all that far away. I believe that this industry is perfectly ripe for disruption. There is a lot of money to be made and people will be more than happy to make it as soon as they can. I think that will happen. 
And I think therefore it will happen very quickly. And this whole hydrogen long haul trucking myth will be dispelled and go. And remember it is simply an idea of the past. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.